You've probably seen a lot of top games of 2020 lists, but this one's going to be a little bit different. This is family friendly games that were released in 2020. Now, these don't have to be games that children are necessarily able to play, just games that you can play with the family, friends, loved ones, etc. without having to upset the sensitivities of many people. 2020 has been a pretty good year for gaming, though we have seen a lot of delays. The games on this list have certainly, certainly delivered for a wide variety of audiences, but let me know your favorite game of 2020 down in the comments below. Let's dive in. Coming in at number 10 is Minecraft Dungeons. Take one of the biggest franchises out there with the most hours watched in gaming by far, and then combine it with Diablo 3 and you get Minecraft Dungeons. It's a great world that allows you to play with in the Minecraft lore in a different way. There are fairly simple controls and simple upgrades, which allows for great co-op with family or friends. Combat and exploration in Minecraft Dungeons are very, very satisfying. The game rain is gonna wanna look in every crack and corner to find hidden treasure and you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. The progression system does have its limits, but this game is a game made for any age group. And I would argue that this game is actually good for non-gamers. Lots of replayability in a great expansive world that maybe wanes out over time, but this still absolutely makes the top 10 this year. Coming in at number 9 is a de facto must have on the Nintendo Switch, Super Mario 3D All-Stars. This is made of three of the greatest platformers of all time, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. Each individual game could have been game of the year for the year it came out, and some actually were. Packaged together, there's nothing extremely special about it, but the Nintendo Switch does enable easy play going from the console to the mobile. There's not much to say about these games that hasn't already been said a thousand times before, but Mario absolutely shines in each and every one of these tentpole games. If you're trying to raise a gamer or just get a non-gamer excited, Mario is the way to go. Next up at number eight, we've got Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. Crash came back in 2019 with an absolute banger of a game. And since then, developers have really been cashing in on Crash Bandicoot's re-emergence to the market. Crash Bandicoot 4 It's About Time is a brand new game made by Toys for Bob. This expands Crash's world and platforming in general. You've got multiple characters available to you that each utilize their own special way of moving through the land. That makes this game highly replayable on top of the fact that every Crash game is pretty highly replayable. Although Crash Bandicoot is really a love letter to the 90s, the new game It's About Time makes sure to not leave you in the 90s. This is a modern version of Crash and frankly, we should all be happy for it. If you like the Crash franchise at all, you will likely like this game. Number seven is a little bit different of an audience, Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales. This is a beautiful expansion to one of the best games on the PS4. Loads of combat and more intense themes do make this teen rated, however the joy of moment to moment gameplay is off the charts and is fully available to anyone gamer or non-gamer alike. Marvel Spider-Man has you swinging across the world and solving crimes and Miles Morales adds a bit more story to that. Some redesigns have made the characters a bit controversial, but this remains one of the best games on the platform. Arkham style combat brought to a masterstroke, fantastic open world filled with a deep, deep city to explore, and the Ubisoft model of scattered quests everywhere means you always have something to do. If you have not played Marvel Spider-Man, this game is an absolute must play. And I'm happy to report Miles Morales just takes it over the top. Number six, Legends of Runeterra. Certainly a little bit different for this list, trading card games remain all the rage, and Riot's League of Legends adjacent is a fantastic example of how to do the genre correctly. The game certainly has a lot of monetization built in, but it can be played 100% free to play. And like, actually free to play. People have completed the entire card collection without paying a single dime, and you're not gonna see that kind of thing with things like Hearthstone. Available on mobile, it was nominated for Game of the Year, and it absolutely deserves it if you're a TCG fan. For League of Legends players, it's fun to explore this familiar world in a different way and see characters interact that may not otherwise have interacted in the lore before. 
For non-League of Legends players, this is still a very approachable game that has a slightly simpler rule set than some other trading card games. Legends of Runeterra is meant to be played for a long, long time, but each game goes fairly quickly, so dive on in and explore this thing free on mobile. At number five, we've got Dreams. I can't tell you the hundreds of hours spent on game designer games in my youth. Dreams is every game that you can, well, dream up. It can just be art or it can be you exploring things others have created. It can be you learning to program. Dreams is a fully digital imagination factory. It can be absolutely beautiful to see a child's creative works come to life, or it can be absolutely jaw-dropping to see what someone who really knows what they're doing can do with this platform. Games like this can be therapy for us, they can be fun for us, or they can just be something that we get caught up in. Dreams is absolutely beautiful, and if you enjoy these slower-paced, non-competitive games, Dreams might be for you. On the absolute flip side of that, we've got Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout at number four. Fall Guys exploded onto the scene as a free game for PS Plus. The community absolutely took to it on both PlayStation and PC, and it resulted in millions of concurrent players, along with hundreds of thousands of people trying to watch Tim the Tatman get his first crown. You play as a cosplaying jelly bean desperate to stay out of a vat of pink goo. Miniature Olympic events challenge a diminishing pool of players to race and battle against each other for the coveted crown, which is the only currency available to unlock the best costumes. Now in season three, the developers continue to expand the possibilities of this concept, introducing more skins, more maps, more worlds, no, more variations, more ways to play. Fall Guys is at its best right now. And if you haven't played in a while, Try it again. Number three, Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Ori and the Blind Force was one of the most beautiful platformers of all time. Ori has you following an enriching story that is often delivered through environment and music. This makes it translatable to people of any age and style. Without spoiling anything, Ori explores deep emotion through the show Don't Tell methodology. This helps retain its E for everyone rating while still having some fairly intense and emotional moments. Platforming is intuitive and beautiful while occasionally being challenging. This is one of the greatest modern examples of Metroidvania style platforming that's absolutely worth playing, especially if you have Game Pass where you can just play this game without having to purchase it. Moving away from the beauty into the quirky at number two, we've got Animal Crossing New Horizons. This was the game of quarantine. Animal Crossing's a life sim if your life was that of a cuddly but crushing capitalist society ruled by a raccoon. In 2020, practically every Switch owner spent their year going into massive, massive debt and repaying to their generous landlord who immediately convinced them they need to go into debt again. And we're still talking the game. Why is this game so amazing? Heart and soul. Every interaction is rewarding. Every dialogue piece is engaging. Manipulate the land to craft the island just the way you want it to be, and then go explore other islands to help cross-pollinate plants or find buried treasure. This game hooks you for hundreds of hours before you even blink, and then gives you the task of pulling up 10,000 weeds as punishment if you forget to play for a little while. It's very likely that if you own this game, this is one of the only games you played in 2020, and it is absolutely worth its purchase price. Last but not least, topping the family-friendly games is probably a bit of a stretch of that term, but it's Hades. Escaping Hell as the Son of Hades doesn't sound like it would be number one on a list of family-friendly games, but Supergiant manages to make this game one of the best of the year. I've actually played since last year in Early Access, but when this officially released in September, it took the world by storm. Supergiant is known for their beautiful world building, entrancing narration, and fun combat. Hades delivers on all three then adds in this gameplay loop that leaves you playing an endless loop of frustrating fun. As this is a roguelike, every failed attempt to win is actually just a permanent step forward for future runs. Controls are fairly simple, but combat can be very punishing. You've got different weapon types that you explore the game with, so things are always moving and changing. This may not necessarily be a game for kids, but there's a little here to prevent you from playing with them around. Hades will draw you in until it frustrates you into rage quitting, and then it'll remind you to play again the next day, because just, just maybe this time will be the time we get out. If you haven't already experienced this game, I suggest you do. 
All right, that's been the best family-friendly games of 2020. I've got a couple more lists reviewing 2020 that'll come out uh, probably in 2021, let's be honest. But if you wanna see those, make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. That helps YouTube know that you wanna see more of my videos or that you would like others to see my videos as well, which is always greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching and until next time, see ya.